What's up guys? It's Kevin from Mathers on the Map and today is the 20th van build episode covering two things. One, our kitchen cabinet and two, our gray water tank which is stored underneath our van and we'll show you how we put our cabinets together. It's not completed just yet so this is part one and then we'll also show you how we put together our gray water tank, the fittings that we use and how we ran our drain line through the floor of the van to the tank. So let's jump right in. So now I'm working on the kitchen here and this is Taylor's design of what we're planning on doing. So the fridge is going to be on the right hand side and we're going to have three drawers that are tall and skinny and then we're going to have a cabinet and maybe a little lever type drawer thing where the sink's going to be and then we'll have potentially another cabinet or drawers on this side with uh, uh, another drawer up top and then a stove top, two burner stove up top here. So. Okay. Oh, yeah. Alright, so Taylor is drilling in the countersink for the refrigerator part of the kitchen cabinet. It's good. He's just drilling in. All right, so now Taylor has the hole in. You might notice two holes there. I don't know why. Because <laughs> you told me the wrong. <laughs> I picked this place. All up. right. All right, so here's our first start of the kitchen cabinet for the fridge. And it's a little bit different from our dresser because we didn't put any supports in the back here and that's because our refrigerator will stick out a little bit further than the cabinet against the reflectic so we didn't want to block it with the wood but overall we have two supports on top for our countertop that will glue down and maybe screw in and then we have plenty of support with three quarter inch down below to hold the refrigerator and then we'll be screwing the refrigerator into the face frame that we're going to apply to the front of this All right, so I got half of the kitchen cabinet done. I put a piece of three quarter inch plywood just to hold it in place to kind of get an idea of what the countertop's gonna look like. I just put some weights on the end there to hold it in place. But ours is gonna be refrigerator, a tall but skinny cabinet or drawer. And then we're gonna have our kitchen right here and then our propane uh, two burner stove right next to it. Looking outside, if the door was open, you would be able to see it. So, just trying to get a gauge of how much space I need. So right now, this sink measures 15 inches from both sides, and this is going to be undermounted. The count. This is going to be an under undermounted sink underneath the countertop, and since it's 15 inches wide, then I know my cabinet has to be at least 15 inches wide. And then next here. This is about 14 inches from the corner of the sink to the edge of this piece of plywood. So that's gonna be our next drawer slash cabinet down here. Also, one thing to consider, so on the back side of this cabinet, it's gonna be one complete sheet of three quarter inch or half inch on the back side. So you're not gonna be seeing the seams of the front or of the cabinet walls. So it's going to be just one whole sheet, so it's going to be nice and smooth, nice and clean. Alright, so I have the cabinet front facing the plywood here, 
and I'm just lining up the next piece that I'm going to connect. So I built this first, and that way I could do all of my screws. I only have one visible hole here that I'll seal up with putty, and the rest were all pocket holes from the underneath of the the base of the cabinet there. So from the back view, you can see all these holes here. So you can't see it. I'm going to do the same thing like this to this one. And then I'm going to be putting on the backing plate because this is going to be exposed when you open the door of the van. So if you notice here, I have about three quarters of an inch, which will make a big sheet of three quarter inch plywood on the back here, all the way to the top and across. And that's just gonna lay flush and we'll have a nice smooth finish against the door. Alright, so I'm about to put the bottom of the cabinet underneath the sink, or the, the floor of the cabinet, I guess. And I measured three inches here with the line. And that's because we have a three inch toe kick. So we're going to elevate everything three inches from the ground. So I have my pocket holes drilled on both sides. So from the inside of the cabinet, you won't see any screws. It'll be nice and flush. So now I'm going to put wood glue and then screw these in. Another thing that I thought is helpful that I want to point out is that I am laying my cabinets the front of the cabinets are laying on the ground. That way when I'm putting on my floors, everything is flush and lined and even. All right, so this piece here is gonna be what's visible when we open the sliding door. So it's gonna be a flush, completely smooth. We might put a little shelf on the back here. I'm not sure yet, but this is what we wanted. We didn't want any seams looking into the van when the door is open. So it turned out pretty good. This is three quarter inch. We maybe could have did half inch, but I'd rather be have a pretty strong wood back here if we decide to put the table in. All right, so we got the cabinet inside the van right now, so I wanna show you what it's gonna look like. This is the spot for our refrigerator. Next, we have a tall, skinny drawer. Here's our sink, or where our sink will be, and then this is where our propane two burner will be as well. I'm gonna put the face frame on next, and then the backing wall of the outside of the cabinet. And here's the face frame right over here which I'll cover how I did that in a little bit. But you can see with the face frame, I'm gonna be screwing it in from the inside. So there's not gonna be many holes of the face frame, if it, if any, um, from the outside, just to make sure that it stays nice and smooth. That's the face frame and the back wall of the cabinet. That is going to be outside, exposed outside the vehicle when we open the sliding door, covering this spot up right here. We just cut a little hole here for our puck light switch. So that'll go right into there. We'll run a wire through it and it'll be hooked up to our battery 12 volt fuse box in the upper cabin right there. So we got the back wall on the back of the cabinet Wait. and we have the face frame about to get nailed into the front of the cabinet right now. 
we got the first coat of paint on the face frame and it's ready to get screwed in all right so we're about to put the face frame on and before we screw it into place we're going to use some wood glue and we already have the pocket holes ready to go so we could just zip on zip the face frame directly to the cabinet so here's the cabinet with the face frame on looking really good and then with the back of the cabinet it's not fully secured yet but looks good Right now, Kevin is putting together the 90 degree angles that will go into that cabinet and make our plumbing for our sink. <clears throat> yep, and we're doing it to the cabinet instead of to the floor because, I don't know, I think it's going to be easier to make sure everything's aligned and ready to go by doing it this way. Now he's just cleaning off the edges that he'll put in the 90 degree angle. Fit them in there. And I'm also going to use this insulation just to keep uh, resistance to vibration, things like that. And to keep it warm. We have the plumbing lines ran underneath and secured. We have the insulation and we have it running to the side of our water compartment here. And I drilled a pilot hole. I'm not sure if you could see it because the sun and the shade right here which is what we're gonna put our drain through, our drain pipe through. And that's gonna go into this hole right here. So coming together. Mm -hmm. All right guys, so this is what it's looking like. The fridge is right here, it's not in yet but it's pretty much ready to go next step i'll be building the drawers for this the cabinet door the drawers and the cabinet over here as well as the support for the sink i'm just gonna go right here i gotta finish the plumbing and also run the hose for the propane i'm not sure where i'm going to put that yet i'm probably going to just put it in the bottom of this cabinet here um, but this is where it's going to go i'm going to have it drilled and secured into the fairing strips down here and down there and then also when I'm building my bench for our bed I'm going to be drilling this into the bench so that's going to look good down here I got my drain line going through there I'm not sure if you can see that into the floor and then I have my red and cold lines going all the way underneath here through the support here that's going to run up and then across into here all right so our kitchen cabinet is 61 and three quarters of an inch So our sink, or if you're looking for the dimensions here, our refrigerator is about 24 and three quarters, but you gotta subtract the face frame here, so a little less than that. We have a drawer, tall and skinny drawer here, which is about, I think, six and a half inches wide. Then we have our kitchen sink, which is 15. And then we have our uh, propane two burner, which is going to be, I think, 12 and a half, which is going to be about 12 and a half inches. So, yeah, so our uh, kitchen cabinet is roughly 34 and a half inches high because we have the one and a half inch butcher block that we plan on getting, and it's 20 inches wide. So just keep that in mind if you're curious about our dimensions. There you go. Um, 
yeah, other than that, pretty pumped. A lot of work, a lot, a lot of work, but that's it. All right, so for the kitchen sink gray water tank, I have a five gallon tank here that I'm going to be putting housing underneath the van using copper hanger strap. And then my fittings that are going to be, I'm going to have three fittings on here. One is going to be an intake supply to the gray water. One's going to be an air valve to release the pressure as water it fills up the tank, air will come out. And then the bottom one here will be for the uh, electric ball valve that I'll hook up to our switch and we'll be able to uh, open up the gray water tanks from the inside of the van instead of having to crawl underneath. So for the intake, we're gonna use a half inch uh, male pipe thread with a half inch uh, barb fitting. All right, so I just realized that I want to have a thicker drainage line. So we moved up to five eighths of an internal diameter instead of a half inch internal diameter. I found a five eighths adapter with a half inch male pipe thread. And for the shower, we're probably gonna go uh, three fourths inch, but that's what we're doing right now. So I gotta switch this uh, mount for underneath. And then for the air, we'll have a half inch pipe thread with a three eighths internal diameter barbed fitting. And then for this ball valve, we're gonna have a male pipe thread half inch to male pipe thread half inch nipple and then we'll put a, ho a garden hose adapter on the outside i am working on the gray water tank right now i am underneath the van if you can't tell and here's what i'm working with so i have my copper pipe hanger right here and i have three strands so far that i'm putting on the passenger side as you can see here, this is the step into the van. That's the front. And then here's the step ends. This is where my water tank's gonna be. And those are the back wheels right there. So I'm putting this in. I am drilling a hole first and then using the zip-in screws. Zip-ins to secure it to the van. And I'm starting on one side, and then I'll get it on the other side once I have all three strips done. It's not fun. All right. Hello again. So here's what it looks like. I have three straps, four straps actually, of copper wire. Three on... Uh, side by side of the van and one going from the front to the back. Put this rubber piece here. It's a little wobbly, but it's not coming down. What's up guys? Back under here again. Here you can see I switched out the or the half inch for the five eighths. And here's my five eighths hose that I'm just gonna clamp in. And secure it into place right now. All right, I got the wires connected. Now I'm just going to use uh, some electric tape, tape it up, and zip tie it to the hose line here, and then I will pull up the excess wire here to make it a little bit more tight. Sorry for the tilt. All right, so the GoPro died, but here's what it looks like underneath. This is the other side of the tank. So on the side, that's the front of the vehicle. And here's the uh, electric ball valve and just wire tied to the nylon and then going right up.
All right, guys, so that wraps up part one of the kitchen cabinet. So we built the frame, the face frame, everything. We ran our plumbing lines and some of our electrical wires that we needed for the kitchen ball valve. And I forgot to mention, I did run a line that's straight through here, which will be for our tow kick lights that we're going to be just doing an LED strip just to give us some lights if we need to go to the bathroom at night and we don't want to wake each other up or something like that. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. This did take a lot longer than expected. A lot of thinking was required in this. Um, and if you have any questions on the gray water tank underneath the vehicle, let me know. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more Van Build episodes. And we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching.